Although it was a crazy morning yesterday with sleet, snow, and rain, the weather got better through the day and the forecast for tomorrow is for the temperature to reach the 60s. Major League Baseball has started. Can spring be far behind? Good, Good morning, morning, Staples. Staples. Good morning, Staples. I'm Jack, and today is Tuesday, April 1st. Yes, April Fool's Day. No worries. No fooling. Just the facts today. Good morning, Staples. I'm Jackson. We'll be back to start the show right after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are a number of things happening around the school over the next few days. To start off, we want to give shout outs to everyone who will be giving blood today during their free period. That's right. Anyone over 17 can donate blood. The blood will go to the Red Cross and it may very well help to save a life. Big ups too to the Key Club for organizing the drive. Besides the blood drive, there are always a number of wonderful community projects that Staples students work on. One very successful one is our sneaker and shoe donation drive. It's going to be happening again this year. Here's Tyler Marks with more information. Hi, I'm Tyler from the Staples Souls for Souls Club, and I just want to announce that the third annual Staples Shoe Drive started uh, this week and will be going until next Friday. So don't forget to bring in your used and new shoes and donate them in the boxes in the front lobby and the side entrances. Thank you. We're bringing you Good Morning Staples today rather than Wednesday because there's a special assembly tomorrow. This year's diversity assembly will be held during period three tomorrow. There will be two performances, but all students should first report to third period class. That's all students except those with freeze period three. Anyone with a freeze should go to the auditorium. We'll be back right after these important words from Mr. Dodig. Good morning. There really aren't many rules that govern your every minute at Staples. Don't forget that most high school students in America have never heard of a free period. Most students spend time in study hall when they're not assigned to a class. There are a couple of rules that are very important because they are either a safety concern or a disturbance to classroom instruction. They are, number one, no ball playing, frisbee throwing, etc. in the courtyard. The courtyard is surrounded by glass and half of the classrooms in this new addition face the courtyard. When there's noisy playing going on out there, students in those classrooms tend to want to watch what's going on and not pay attention to what the teacher had planned for the day. And number two, if there were ever a flash fire in our cafeteria and people had to vacate rapidly during lunch, the athletic bags that protrude into the exit runways would cause a hazard. All that would have to happen is to have one or two students trip and fall on a bag and everyone behind would pile on top of them. We have to have an unobstructed means of egress. Actually, I welcome some ideas from you about where you can leave your bags during the day that would not cause such a hazard. Of course, you all have lockers, which is the logical place. I know you can do this. I know we can solve this problem. This is uh, a school full of terrific kids. Think about it and let me know what you think. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Dodig. This Friday is Sophomore Spirit Crazy Hat Day. The sophomore class is encouraging everyone to wear a fun crazy hat to, show, to school to show your school spirit. Please keep it appropriate. The person with the craziest hat will receive a prize. It's official. Everyone's bracket is busted. It was a wild weekend with some great finishes. Florida's expected, Wisconsin, a little less so. Surprise, surprise for Kentucky and Yukon. Our own final four of pizza and yogurt, there were no shocks as the top seeds move right into the finals. Let's find out about the pizza war first. To no one's great shock, Angelina's easily defeated Joe's and Westport Pizza routed Julian's. So now Staples, it's up to you. Which is the big cheese in town? Is it Angelina's or is it Westport Pizza? Go to the Media Lab homepage and click on the Food War button to decide which place will slice up the competition. Now let's find out about our yogurt war. Here's Brian. Thanks, Adrian. Neither semifinal yogurt contest was close either. It was 16 handles over Peach Wave and Sweet Frog defeating Pinkberry. Now it gets tough. Which yogurt is tops in town? Is it 16 handles or Sweet Frog? Go to the Media Lab homepage and help decide. Now back to Jack and Jackson. Angelina's Westport Pizza, 
16 handles, sweet frog, tough choices. While we're talking about food, Jack, what's your favorite go-to from the cafeteria? Probably the bacon, egg, and cheese in the morning. How about you, Jackson? Mine's probably was the same, but let's see what some others had liked the best. Period A TV class, we wanted to find out what Staples High School students thought was their favorite food in the cafeteria. Pasta. My favorite food in the cafeteria is my own packed lunch. It's the Philly cheesesteak. Probably have to say smart water. Smart water. Bottled water in general. And we have an important message, because there's a reason why we like smart water. You know, the water fountains used to be great uh, for all of the students in your school, but not recently, uh, they haven't been so It's decent. gone down. It's gone down. The quality, quality is, is low. And, and coincidentally enough, Nick, the, the, the price of the water just happened to go up. Happened to go up. I'm not putting fingers. Now, we're, we're not I'm saying not putting fingers. there's a connection. But there's, but there's definitely a connection. a connection. But there's definitely a connection. Hannah and Aaron spent some time considering why certain classes attract mostly girls and others mostly boys. Here's their report. My TV production partner Hannah and I noticed that there were only four girls in our TV production class. So we went around Staples to see what other classes had uneven gender ratios, and then we talked to Ms. Capozzi. Here's what we found. There generally is approximately four classes here at Staples High School that have a disproportionate amount of students of one gender in each class. That is the tech ed courses, the child development courses, oftentimes the, some of the media courses and an English call, course called the literature of gender, sex, and identity. The ratio of boys and girls in our class is, um, is sometimes pretty weird. I, I, I'm teaching a video graphics class right now with one girl in it, which is strange to me because uh, it's a, a class with a, with a, a lot of artistic type of skills one, one might bring to it. W walk into a class for the first time and they find that there's 15 boys in the class and three girls, for example. Um, um, from my point of view, it's, 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 it's unfortunate because there are many, many, many jobs in the industry for uh, people of boys or girls. It doesn't make any difference. Well, I don't really understand why more people don't, more girls don't take the class because it's not excluding or ostracizing any girls from the class. It's pretty open and they allow everyone to join in and it's fun. So. The media courses, as a matter of fact, the person filming me right now is a female. Uh, this semester, for the first time in my class, I actually have all girls. Um, this is the first time that's happened. Last semester I had about seven boys in the class and it really, um, I thought it was really wonderful. It's definitely a class that caters to both male and females. Uh, we look, for example, at um, how the depiction of men, for example, in uh, Tennessee Williams' A Streetcar Named Desire. We do a unit that looks at dystopia um, in both fiction and in film. Uh, one example being Fight Club. We have a wonderful class this semester, but we are missing that male perspective. That course is not just about women. It's about gender, both genders. How many of you have had a male elementary school teacher or were raised by your dads at home while moms went to work? It's okay to go outside your comfort zone, go outside the box, try something new. Think about it. Thank you to all the teachers who interviewed and Brittany Braswell. Now back to the host. Thanks for the report. As we said at the beginning of the show, we believe the weather is finally turning. Spring means a lot of things, including some great sports here at Staples. Here's a preview of our Wreckers spring sports teams. We're doing an introduction to spring sports season, and we're here to interview the coaches and a few players to see what they have to say on this upcoming season. How can the team repeat last year's success in getting to the state championship? Um, Pretty much just by using the uh, same things that got us there last time. Um, making sure that uh, we put just as much effort in on offense as we do on defense. Um, defense is going to be spearheaded by uh, our returning three-year starter, Cole Gendels in goal. Um, so hopefully, you know, with him making a lot of saves and the defense playing some good shutdown D, uh, we can get the offense the ball and let them do uh, what they do. How does losing last year's senior affect this year? And how do you plan on replacing them with this team? Um, like losing any senior class, uh, it's tough. I mean, there was a lot of leadership and uh, a lot of skill um, that came from that senior class. Um, a lot of kids went on to play in college, doing really well. Um, so it's definitely going to be tough to replace them. But, um, you know, we uh, did well with them and we learned under them. And hopefully uh, we're going to be able to uh, apply the things they taught us 
and uh, follow in their footsteps and hopefully uh, win a championship this year. If there's one game that the student section should show up to, which one would it be? Um, I would say either Greenwich or Ridgefield, both home games um, at about 5.30. Hopefully uh, maybe we can get a move to night games. We'll see what happens. But uh, those are our uh, FCAC rivals that we play every year and uh, definitely going to be uh, big games uh, as Greenwich and Ridgefield are going to have uh, good teams this year. Um, also there's uh, you know Sticks for Soldiers, which is for a great cause. Um, so you come out and support not only the team, but uh, all of the uh, uh, veterans and uh, soldiers fighting for us as uh, at home and abroad. What are you looking forward to most this season? Um, what I'm looking forward to most this season, uh, probably just being the man on and off the field, uh, running over every single kid that gets in my way and uh, making sure my teammates do the same. Now let's send it over to Steve and Coach McFarland to learn more about the baseball team. We are here with the baseball coach, Coach McMullen. Coach McMullen, what are we looking at this year? What are some highlights in the team that we will see in the upcoming season? Well, you know, I think we have a good team coming back. We have a lot of juniors that played at a very high level last year and played in some big games. So, you know, we're excited about, about the season, and uh, we're ready to get, go get going more. So we have a lot of kids coming back, a lot of kids who are played in some real big games, double up quarterfinals, played against the number one team in the state, and we knocked them off. So... I think they're game ready, they're experience ready, and it's you know it's exciting. And if uh, there's one game that the student section should show up to, which game should it be? Well, we have Greenwich at home. We have opening day against Danbury, who who are the defending champions. So there's a couple right there. So make sure you're there for Greenwich and Danbury. Now back to the host. That's it for us today. Let's review. The Key Club blood donation is going on today. Tomorrow is the diversity assembly during period three. Everyone should first report to their period three class. Those with a free come down to the first of the two shows. Friday is Wacky Hat Day. No ball playing in the courtyard. And make sure your stuff is not a hazard in the cafeteria. Oh, and seniors, don't forget to vote in the cafeteria for senior superlatives during the lunch waves. Period two has the next show on Thursday. Bye. Bye.